إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So now we come to this hadith in this chapter regarding the types of magic the hadith of Imran ibn Hussein marfu'an laysa minna man tatayyara aw tutayyara lah aw takahhana aw tukuhhina lah aw sahara aw suhira lah wa man ata kahinan fasaddaqahu bima yaqul فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رواه البزار بإسناد جيد In this hadith it now says For whomsoever performs a tatayyur And this particular issue is going to be mentioned in a chapter particularly specifically later on But basically it is of the types of the superstitions that they used to engage in. That uh, various types of superstitions, various types of affairs that are essentially from the branches of magic. So this hadith says whoever does that or whoever seeks that, seeks for it to be done or whomsoever performs the sorcery or the magic, the sorcery of that type, or seeks for that, seeks for that to occur, or whomsoever performs magic, or seeks for that magic to occur, and whomsoever comes to a sorcerer, fortune teller, and believes him in what he says, then the person who performs these types of activities has disbelieved in that which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has disbelieved in that which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this hadith is just like the one before it. It tells us about the impermissibility of magic, the impermissibility of these fortune tellers and sorcerers, the impermissibility of doing that, engaging in it or seeking out such activities to engage in them, all of that is impermissible. وَالذَّهَاب إِلَى الْكُهَّان Going to the fortune tellers, haram. This hadith tells us again, لِأَنَّهُمْ يُفْسِدُونَ عَقِيدَةَ مَنْ يَذْهَبُ إِلَيْهِمْ Because they corrupt the aqeedah of those who go to them. وَبَعْضُهُمْ رُبَّمَا تَظَاهَرَ بِذِكْرِ اسْمِ اللَّهِ أَوْ يُسَلِّ The shaykh says, some of these fortune tellers might even pretend by mentioning the name of Allah and supplications and things in your presence, or they might even pray and do affairs of that nature as a pretense to you, to misguide the people, so that the people will say, how can you speak bad about this person and say he's a fortune teller and say this about him and that about him, and I've seen him pray, I've seen him go to the mosque. So the shaykh says some of them will do that on purpose, as a cover for themselves to misguide the people further. وَمَا كُلُّ مَنْ يُصَلِّ يَصِيرُ مُسْلِمًا Not everybody who prays is automatically a Muslim. Prayer doesn't enter you into Islam. It's the shahada. قَدْ يُصَلِّيَ الْإِنسَانُ وَيُزَكِّ وَيَسُومُ وَيَحُجْ وَهُوَ كَافِرُ It's possible somebody may pray and he might give the zakat and he might do the fasting and he might even go do hajj but he's a kafir. It's possible. إِذَا فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ نِفَاقًا أَوْ ارْتَكَبَ نَاقِضًا مِنْ نَوَاقِضِ الْإِسْلَامِ If that person was doing all of those actions as a hypocrite, like the munafiqeen at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, where they would pray and they would fast or they would do various actions from the actions of the worship and obedience, but only to show the Muslims and to pretend and to keep their cover. So they were doing all of these actions, but they were kuffar, not Muslims. Or if somebody maybe does something that nullifies his Islam. He might be doing these acts of worship, 
But then he does something which nullifies his Islam. He does some type of shirk. He does some type of shirk. And that may nullify his Islam. فَالْكَاهِنْ لَوْ صَلَّ وَلَوْ صَامْ وَلَوْ حَجْ وَلَوْ تَصَدَّقَ وَلَوْ زَكَّى لَا تُقْبَلْ أَعْمَالُهُ لِأَنَّهُ مُشْرِكٌ كَافِرٌ So if the kahin, these sorcerers, these fortune tellers, even if he prays and he fasts and he does hajj, he gives in charity, he gives zakat, none of those actions will be accepted from him because he's a mushrik, kafir. وَكَذَلِكَ sahir, And also the magician. Even if the magician pretends in front of you, prays and fasts and does other worship, none of that will be accepted from him because he's upon shirk and kufr. وَبَعْضُهُمْ يَقُولْ some people even say, أَنَا انْتَفَعَتُ مِنْ ذَهَابِ إِلَى هَؤُلَاءِ Some people say, I benefited from going to the sorcerer, to the magician, to the fortune teller. They say, I benefited. أَنَا كُنْتْ مَرِيضًا وَانْتَفَعَتْ They say, I was ill, but then I went to these people and I became better. وَحُصُولُ الْحَاجَةِ أَوْ حُصُولُ الْغَرَضِ لَيْسَ دَلِيلًا عَلَى الْجَوَازِ Just because you end up getting what you were looking for when you went to them, Something actually occurs for you, that isn't a proof that what you've done is correct. فَقَدْ يُعْقَ الْإِنسَانِ حَاجَتَهُ مِنْ بَابِ الْفِتْنَةِ وَمِنْ بَابِ الْإِسْتِدْرَاجِ وَالِاخْتِبَارِ Sometimes a person may be given something as a test and a trial upon him. As a test and a trial upon him. Not that when he went to the magician and he got it, that this shows the magician is correct now. He was given what he went and sought for from the sorcerer as a test upon him, as a trial upon him. وَالْعِبْرَةِ فِي كَوْنِهِ دَلَّ الدَّلِيلَ شَرْعِي عَلَى جَوَازْ هَذَا الشَّيْءِ أَوْ عَلَى تَحْرِيمِهِ هَذَا هُوَ شَأْنِ The point is, whether Islamically something is halal or haram, Islamically something is permissible or not, that is what you look at, not just that you say, I went to a sorcerer and I got what I wanted, I became better, I was ill, so this is a proof sorcerers are okay. That is not the case. This person may have become better afterwards, he gets his health back as a test upon him further. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ تَكَهَّنَا أَوْ تُكُهِّنَ لَهُ أَوْ سَحَرَ أَوْ سُحِرَ لَهُ ويقول ومن أتى كاهنا فصدقه بما يقول فقد كفر بما أنزل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فمعنى تكهنا يعني فعل الكهانة ومعنى تكهنا لا فعلت الكهانة من أجل من أجله بطلبه so the one who performs this sorcery or uh, fortune telling or the one who performs that due to the request of another Whomsoever performs those actions and engages in the actions of sorcery and fortune telling and magic, then this person has disbelieved in that which was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. فَمَنْ ذَهَبَ إِلَى الْكُهَانِ لَهُ حَالَةً So a person who goes to these fortune tellers has two possible states, two possibilities. The person who goes to the fortune tellers. الْحَالَةُ الْأُولَى and la yusaddiqahum. The first possibility is that a person goes to the fortune teller, but he doesn't believe in anything he was told. He doesn't believe in what the fortune teller tells him. Lakin yaqul, uridan ara madha indahum. But this type of person simply says, I just want to see out of curiosity what they do. And he doesn't believe in him. He doesn't believe in what he gets told and what he tells him and what he does, but he says, out of curiosity. I just want to go and see what they do and how they do it. فَهَذَا لَا تُقْبَلُ لَهُ صَلَاةٌ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا This type of person who goes there to these people, to the fortune tellers, to the sorcerers, even if he doesn't believe in them, but out of curiosity, his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days. لِأَنَّ ذَهَابَهُ إِلَيْهِ مُحَرَّمٌ Because the very fact of going to them is haram in the first place. Whether you believe what they tell you afterwards or not, the very act of going to them is haram. So when a person does that, even out of curiosity, then his prayer is not accepted for 40 days. فَعُوقِبَ بِأَنَّهُ لَا تُقْبَلُ لَهُ صَلَاةُ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا إِلَّا إِذَا ذَهَبَ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَجْلِ التَّثَبُّتْ فِي شَأْنِهِمْ مِنْ أَجْلِ مَنْعِهِمْ وَالْقَضَاءَ عَلَى فَسَادِهِمْ 
The only exception is if somebody goes to them, somebody goes to them to ascertain, to find out what is going on and whether this person is a magician or a fortune teller or what he's up to. Like the authorities, for example. The authorities, some of these Arab lands, they have special authorities who go and uh, clamp down on the magicians and sorcerers and these types of people. So they wouldn't come under this narration. They have to go there to check, to find out what's going on. And if they find them, they clamp down on them. So they are preventing this evil. They are going there to find out. And if it is the case, they prevent it then. They stop it. They take them away. They imprison them, whatever the case may be. So if that is the situation, that's different. But otherwise, out of curiosity, out of uh, interest, somebody goes there to seek to see what is occurring, then this is impermissible and his prayer is not accepted for 40 days. Then after that, it mentions, أَمَّا إِذَا صَدَّقَهُمْ The second situation, if he actually believes in what they tell him, if he does actually believe in what they tell him, أَمَّا إِذَا صَدَّقَهُمْ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then that person has disbelieved in what was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. It's kufr. فَهُوَ لَا يَرْجِعُ سَالِمًا أَبَدًا He will not come back safe and sound ever. If he goes there and believes in this nonsense of the sorcery and the magicians and the fortune tellers, he will not come back sound. مِمَّا يَدُلُّ عَلَى تَحْرِيمِ الذَّهَابِ إِلَى الْكُهَّانِ وَالْمُشَعْوَذِينَ وَالْمُدَجِّلِينَ This therefore indicates to you the impermissibility of going to these fortune tellers and these sorcerers and these liars of that nature. Then it says, وَرَوَاهُ الطَّبَرَانِ فِي الْأَوْسَطِ بِإِسْنَادٍ حَسَنٍ مِنْ حَدِيثِ بْنِ عَبَّاسِ رضي الله عنهما دون قوله ومن أتى إلى آخره قال البغوي العراف الذي يدعي معرفة الأمور بمقدمات يستدل بها على المسروق وَمَكَانُ الضَّالَّةِ وَنَحْوَ ذَلِكَ Al-Imam al-Baghawi, he said that an arraf, as we say like these fortune tellers types of people, sorcerers, that is somebody who claims to have knowledge of certain affairs, claims to have knowledge of certain affairs via certain prerequisites, certain things that he does, which will then indicate to him as he claims where a stolen item is or where a lost item is. He performs certain affairs which in his uh, methodology as he tells the people will then now inform him and enlighten him as to where these hidden and lost things are. So all of that is impermissible. وَهَذَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ فالشياطين تأتيه بذلك لكن يتظاهر بعمل أشياء يظن الناس أن هذه الأشياء من الأمور المباحة لكن هذه رموز فقط وإلا في الحقيقة هو يتعامل مع الشيطان وإلا ما الذي يدريه عن مكان المسروق وما الذي يدريه عن مكان الضالة لولا أنه يتعامل مع الجن ومع الشياطين الشيخ الفوزان says these other things that they do They'll do various types of acts. They'll say, let me look at your hand, let me do this, write down the name of your mother's name, etc. Various things they ask you to do. And they say, via these activities, we can work out where your lost item is, where such and such is, what's happened to this, what's happened to that. This knowledge, we can then ascertain it. We can find out this knowledge. So they do these various activities. In reality, these various activities that they do, and those are examples of actually magic, what they do with the hands and the names. But other activities that they do, the Shaykh says they aren't the activities that inform them of where those last things are. The actual reality of it is that they have shayateen working with them. Shayateen who will then go and find out where such and such an item is, where such and such a lost property is. They are the ones who will go and bring them back this information. Because these magicians and fortune tellers bow to them, prostrate to them, come and shirk with them. So they are the ones who go and inform them of these things. وَقِيل هُوَ الْكَاهِنُ وَالْكَاهِنُ هُوَ الَّذِي يُخْبِرُ عَنِ الْمَغِيَّبَاتِ فِي الْمُسْتَقْبَلِ The kahin, the fortune teller, is somebody 
who informs you of unseen things in the future. One of the definitions given for this is that he informs you of the unseen affairs in the future. بسبب أن الشياطين تخبره بما تعلم مما لا يعلمه الإنسان لأن الشياطين تدري عن أشياء لا يعرفها الناس فيخبرون الناس في مقابل إن الناس يخضعون لهم ويفعلون ما يطلبونه منهم من الشرك والكفر بالله عز وجل ويتقربون إليهم فإذا تقرب الإنسي إلى الجن بما يريد خدمه الجني بما يطلبه منه من الأمور الغائبة So sometimes these people these magicians and fortune tellers will inform you of things which are normally outside of our comprehension. Because, as the Shaykh says, the shayateen may be aware of things that humans are not aware of yet. So the shayateen have that additional knowledge of certain things. They will come and give that additional knowledge they have to these magicians and they will pass that on to the people. And the people will think how amazing they knew these things, they knew those things. So then they become impressed by these magicians and fortune tellers who inform them of these details that we as humans would typically not know. وَقِيلْ هُوَ الَّذِي يُخْبِرُ عَمَّا فِي الضَّمِيرِ It is said also that these types of fortune tellers and sorcerers are those who tell you what is within yourself, what you're thinking. They tell you what is within yourself, what you're thinking. يَعَنِي عَمَّا فِي النَّفْسِ وَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْقُلُوبِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ and nobody knows what is in your heart except Allah. لكن الشيطان قد يعرف شيئا من هواجس الإنسان لأنه هو الذي يوسفس للإنسان But sometimes the shaytan may have an impression of what this person is about because the shaytan himself is the one whispering to him. The shaytan himself is the one whispering to the people upon misguidance. So when he whispers certain affairs, he has an idea Possibly this person will be inclined to those particular affairs or those particular sins. Shaitan has an idea because he's the one whispering to him. So then the shaitan will inform the magician, the sorcerer, the fortune teller of these affairs. And then that person will narrate them back to the individual and the individual will be surprised that that's true. I was actually thinking that. I was actually thinking about that and that is something which had crossed my mind. So then he begins to think that this individual has knowledge of the unseen and knowledge of what is in his heart. وَقَالَ أَبْلْ عَبَّاسِ ibn تَيْمِيَةِ ibn تَيْمِيَةِ Shaykh al-Islam ibn تَيْمِيَةِ رحمه الله said العراف اسم للكاهن والمنجم والرمال ونحوهم مما يتكلم في معرفة الأمور بهذه الطرق Shaykh al-Islam ibn تَيْمِيَةِ أَبْلْ عَبَّاسِ was his kunya وَلَيْسَ لَهُ ibn اسمه العباس ابن تيمية did not actually have a son called عباس but this was his كنية أبو العباس as you know ابن تيمية رحمه الله did not get married so he did not have any children he did not have a son by the name of عباس but his كنية was عباس لا أبو العباس his actual name was أحمد أحمد ابن عبد الحليم Ahmad, the son of Abdul Halim, the son of Abdul Salam, Ibn Taymiyyah. So Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions here that the Arraf, these fortune tellers and sorcerers, they are these people who are like the sorcerers, they are like the astrologers where they look into the stars and they believe the stars, the star signs, they tell you about the future. Or, Ar-Rammal. Ar-Rammal, the individuals who perhaps draw the lines uh, in the sand or draw the lines upon the hand or they look at the lines on the hand and these types of affairs. And then they inform you of what is going to occur and what will happen in the future or here or there. So all of these types of people, when they perform this type of magic, whether it is drawing the lines and looking at them and telling you what's going to happen, looking at the stars and the star signs and telling you what's going to happen, all of these things with their various methods they use are all haram. And they are all under these narrations of the Arraf, of the fortune teller, the sorcerers. The important point that we want to highlight here, the Shaykh says, is that all of these people claim to have some knowledge of the unseen. All of these people claim to have some type of knowledge of the unseen. 
that they will tell you what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, this information, that information. They all claim to have some type of knowledge of the unseen. And we know that these people, therefore, are the ruling upon them is kufr. Al hukm anna kulla ha'ula ikafara. All of these are kufar. لأنهم يدعون مشاركة الله تعالى في صفة من أعظم صفاته وهي علم الغيب. Because all of these people are claiming to have participation with Allah. They all claim to be participants with Allah in the knowledge of the unseen. They all claim to have knowledge of the unseen. And that is something which is from the specifics to Allah. That nobody has knowledge of the unseen except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they claim that, this is kufr. وقال ابن عباس في قوم يكتبون أبا جاد وينظرون في النجوم ما أرى من فعل ذلك له عند الله من خلاق He said قال الشيخ رحمه الله وقال ابن عباس في قوم يكتبون أبا جاد وينظرون في النجوم أبا جاد المراد بها حروف الجمل التي هي أبجد هوز حطي كلما These are various types of words that they used to write Various types of words أبجد هوز حطي كلما These various types of words that they used to write وينظرون في النجوم And they used to look into the stars Using them as like star signs to work out the unseen etc so Ibn Abbas said, ما أرى من فعل ذلك I cannot see that the people who do this, that they could ever possibly be in paradise. They can't be. So Ibn Abbas, he states, I cannot see, I do not view that these people have any share in the hereafter. That these people have any share in the hereafter of paradise. That they will not be in paradise. The ones who perform these types of actions and die upon them. ومعناه أنه كافر This therefore means... That the person is a kafir, that's the ruling, that's what Ibn Abbas is stating. That these people upon their state as it is, they are kufar. لِأَنَّ الَّذِي لَيْسَ لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ هُوَ كَافِرْ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى فِي السَّحَرَةِ وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُوا لَمَنِ اشْتَرَاهُ مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ Because the one who does not have any share in the hereafter of paradise, then that person is a kafir. The one who doesn't have any share of paradise, he's going to be in hellfire forever, then he's a kafir. So this is what is meant by this statement regarding the fortune tellers, the sorcerers, the magicians and their likes. فَهَذَا حُكْمُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ إِبْنْ عَبَّاسِ رضي الله عنهما على أصحاب الطلاسم الذين يكتبون الحروف المقطعة وينظرون في النجوم ويقولون سيحدث كذا فهذا من ادعاء علم الغيب وهو طريقة من طرق الكهانة أو العرافة أو التنجيم أو السعر سميها ما شئت لا يهمنا الأسماء الذي يهمنا النتيجه والحكم الشرعي so the sheikh says these are the types of people who use these symbols you see the magicians they use all types of symbols triangles and circles and all oh, question marks and all types of symbols that they put down looks like strange writings these symbols and things they put down on the paper they use all of that type of thing and they use broken letters and they look at the stars and they say from all of these ways of theirs that they can work out the unseen. And when you look at the the Taweez thing that people wear, often inside there you open it up, it's not Quran ayat, or even if it is in amongst it, there will be all of these symbols and signs. And these are the types of things these sorcerers and magicians write. They put these symbols and signs and squiggly lines and all types of things which are not understood to us. فالحاصل أن هذا باب عظيم. The point therefore is the Sheikh says the conclusion that this is a great chapter. لأنه يعالج أمراضا واقعة في العالم اليوم. Because it remedies many of the problems which are present in the world today. لا أقول في العالم الكافر. Sheikh says I'm not talking about the uh, non-believing parts of the world. لأنه ليس بعد الكفر دم. لكن في العالم الإسلامي He's saying I'm talking about in the Islamic countries These types of affairs that exist وربما يسمون أعمالا رياضية وفنونا تشكيلية ووجود هذا الوباء 
وباء السحراء والمشعوذين والدجالين والكهنة والمنجمين يسمون هذا من باب الفنون أو يسمونهم بأسماء تدل على تبجيلهم وعلى أنهم أصحاب علم وأصحاب خبرة أو أشد من ذلك يدعون أنهم أولياء الله The Shaykh says these types of activities that the magicians, the sorcerers, they do nowadays in many places, their activities are promoted and advertised as artistic skills. That this person, he draws these lines and he looks into them. It's an artistic type of skill to be able to look at the lines in the hands of a person and work out things. They promote and advertise these things as some type of artistic ability and skill that people have. So the Shaykh says all of this is from their nonsense and sometimes they may even promote these types of sorcery and magic as things to look up to. That this is something magnificent and amazing that these people can do to look up to those things. And this is all from their misguidance. And they claim even sometimes that these magicians are from the awliya of Allah and that they can do these things that they do because it is from the miracles of Allah to them. Yes. As Ahlul Sunnah, we believe in miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does allow the true awliya of Allah to have miracles. It's possible. But the shayateen or these magicians and sorcerers, what they do is not miracles. What they do is kufr. And there's a clear distinction between the awliya of Allah and the awliya of the shaytan. If a person was to look into the six fundamental principles of a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, you will find that topic mentioned in there regarding the distinction between the awliya of Allah in reality and the awliya of the shaytan. فَالْكَرَامَاتِ تَجْرِي عَلَىٰ أَيْدِي رِجَالٍ صَالِحِينَ مُسْتَقِيمِينَ عَلَىٰ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ نعم it can occur to those who are upon righteousness, miracles. والخوارق الشيطانية تجري على أيدي كفرة مشعوذين. As for these satanic types of magic and sorcery, then that is what occurs to these or with these kuffar, these sorcerers and magicians. وأيضا الكرامات لا صنع للآدم فيها. As for the miracles that are real, then the humans who these miracles occur for, they have nothing to do with it. They themselves don't perform any part of that miracle. They are miracles from Allah upon them. إِنَّمَا يُجْرِيهَ اللَّهِ بِخِلَافَ هَذِيَ الْخَوَارِقِ الشَّيْطَانِيَّةِ فَهِيَ حِيَلْ وَمِهَنْ وَحِرَفْ وَتَجْجِيلْ تَجْجِيلْ يَعْمَلُونَهُ بِهِمْ So the shaykh says, as for these types of things that these magicians and sorcerers do, that is not independent of them. They themselves are doing these uh, tricks and using the shayateen and performing this magic. They pretend to the people that because of these various tricks they can do this magic, but really it's the shayateen and the kufr that they commit with the shayateen to perform those things. فالحاصل أن هذا باب عظيم ويشتمل على علاج أو على علاج لمرض خطير يتفشى الآن في العالم الإسلامي وهو مرض الكهنة والصحراء والمنجمين والعرافين. So this chapter it remedies a great problem which is prevalent in the Muslim lands, the issue of magic and sorcery and the uh, ones who look into the stars and the star signs and those types of affairs. And the Sheikh says, if you were to ponder over this chapter you would find that the Shaykh has not just written this chapter for the sake of it. This particular chapter is curing, remedying a great problem which is widespread across the world today. And it has become even more so in recent times, the Shaykh says, become more widespread and become more prevalent amongst the people. This issue of magic and sorcery and magicians, fortune tellers. So this chapter, it is curing and remedying a great problem that is in need of cure and remedy. وَأَيْذًا هُمْ مُحْتَاجُونَ لِلْعِلَاجِ مِنَ الْأَمْرَاضِ فَيَقُولُونَ هَذِهِ فِيهَا مَنَافِعْ وَفِيهَا عِلَاجِ وَلَا يَدْرُونَ أَنَّ الْمَضَارْ أَلَّتِي فِيهَا أَكْبَرْ مِنَ الْمَنَافِعْ Sometimes people, they might be ill, they might have problems. So they want to go to these 
magicians or sorcerers and their likes to seek a remedy for themselves. And perhaps afterwards they come out claiming that they have been remedied, they have been cured by these magicians or sorcerers. And they say there is great benefit in going to them. But they don't realize that the harm of going to them or what the reality of this harm is when they go to them. With those narrations talking about how their prayer will not be accepted. And if they believe in them, how that is kufr altogether. They don't realize the great harms in these affairs. إِنْ كَانَ فِيهَا مَنَافِعْ أَوْ يَدْخُلُونَهَا فِي قِسْمِ الْفُنُونِ الْمَهَارَاتِ فَيَجِبُوا عَلَى طَلَبَةِ الْعِلْمِ Therefore it is binding, obligatory upon the students of knowledge. أَنْ يَهْتَمُّوا بِهَذَا الْأَمَرِ To give importance to this affair. وَأَنْ يَتَفَهَّمُوا هَذَا الْأَمَرِ And to understand this affair. وَيَتَفَقَّهُوا فِيهِ And to become knowledgeable and have understanding of these issues. وَيُعَالِجُوا هَذِهِ الْأَمْرَادِ الْمُتَفَشِّيَةِ And to cure and remedy these illnesses and diseases that people have fallen into in magic and sorcery and fortune telling. أَلَّتِي تَقْضِي عَلَى الْعَقِيدَةِ These types of misguidances that would essentially overcome and override your aqidah, nullify it and make errors in it. وَتَقْضِي عَلَى دِينِ الْإِسْلَامُ الْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ And to the extent... That these types of uh, illnesses, this uh, fortune telling, this sorcery, and the likes of its affairs, they would altogether wipe out your Islam. That a person can end up as a kafir, as a consequence of these types of activities. And it is something widespread, the Sheikh says, in the Islamic Muslim countries. Not in the kafir countries, Muslim countries themselves. It is widespread, these types of people, the magicians and the sorcerers and the fortune tellers. And they come to you and they say, give me the name of your mother. Let me see the hand and the lines. They do all of these things. All of these types of activities, they perform them. Working with their shayateen, with the jinn, uh, in order to harm and in order to create that corruption amongst the people. And they do not bring benefit to the people. They're not curing the people. They are bringing a greater degree of harm and evil upon the people. So this chapter is a great chapter. Highlighting the evil of those affairs and the warning against it. The next chapter, Babu ma jaa fin nushra. An nushra. This is another type of magic. This is another type of magic which is mentioned. Babu ma jaa fin nushra. عن جابر أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل عن النشرة فقال هي من عمل الشيطان. The opening hadith here mentions about نشرة and that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said it is a type of magic. And this is an important topic because it is a topic which is about removing magic. How some people remove magic with other types of magic. They go to magicians or they go to fortune tellers and sorcerers <coughs> who tell them we have good jinn and we'll be able to sort out the bad jinn and the magic on you. So they do exactly what they're not supposed to do to remove something else which has happened to them in the first place. This is essentially some of the issues that are going to be dealt with in this chapter. The chapter regarding curing the magic, using other magic. Uh, and these types of affairs which are actually impermissible. These types of issues that are going to be mentioned in this chapter in removal of magic and how they do that is actually impermissible forms of that removal. So inshallah ta'ala we'll start that new chapter next week. The chapter regarding Nushra. Uh, and up to there, try to revise everything so far, look over the chapters and understand the chapters of magic properly so far. And this next chapter will still be continuing on the issue of magic and the removal of magic and what is allowed and what is not allowed. And that, insha'Allah, will begin with next week after the Maghrib prayer, uh, approximately 8 p.m. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.